All right, welcome back. This is part two in terms of the new releases that are coming out in November and December. I actually think there's like one or two sort of minor exceptions, but there are things that I missed recently that I really should have made a point of highlighting. So I'm gonna pepper some of that in, but uh, again, this is part two. So if you missed part one, it was uh, recorded about a week ago. I'll link it in the description if you wanna go check that one out. But basically we're gonna continue um, with uh, with all of these, uh, these additions, these uh, vinyl releases that are coming out over the next two months uh, to the end of the year. All right, um, uh, yeah, before we get started, as usual, um, hit like, hit subscribe, uh, hit the notification bell, so it, uh, it'll let you know every time that I post a video, and I've got some really exciting ones coming up, including a couple of, couple of interviews that I think people are gonna uh, really like, or at least I enjoyed um, recording. And um, yeah, uh, otherwise, uh, head over to Instagram, post there every day. Uh, my handle is what underscore can underscore brown. All right, so real quick, before we get started, just as an update from my last video, my copy of KB Blues did come in, so this new uh, Tone Poet edition. So very excited to dive into that, and I'm sure that I'll be doing some type of video to discuss the details of that one. And then um, two titles that I brought up in that last video were uh, titles by Newland, Newland Records out of the UK. One was by John Wright, and the other is by um, is one by Kenny Dorham. And guess what? They um, they sent me. This doesn't happen to me very frequently, but they they sent me copies. So this isn't out just yet, but it's out very very soon. And um, I'm excited because I do own original copies of these. Although admittedly, my Kenny Dorham one is not in the best shape. But um, I'm I'm excited to uh, to listen to these and um, and I'm sure that I'll do a video talking about them in more detail in terms of how they sound, how they sound relative to the uh, to the originals. So keep an eye out in the very near future for those videos. All right, let's just dive right in because otherwise we will be here all day. There's a lot to get through. So the first one that I want to talk about is actually also the t uh, sort of the subject of an interview that I just completed, which will either be posted right before this video or right after, it kind of, uh, kind of depends. But anyway, um, that title is by Craft Recordings and it is called Hot House, The Complete Jazz at Massey Hall Recordings. All right, so this is a um, this is a big one. It's triple LP, and uh, what they're doing is they're bringing together the Massey Hall recordings that originally came out on Debut Records. So Debut Records was Charles Mingus's own sort of personal label um, that he uh, that he started because he didn't like any of uh, any of the uh, the labels that were out there. And uh, and what it collects is uh, yeah, it's all the recordings from this May 1953 concert. So what happened? Uh, what happened was. Dizzy Gillespie, Charlie Parker, Bud Powell, Max Roach, and uh, Charles Mingus came together to record at, at Massey Hall. It's a 27th, uh, 2753 capacity venue. Um, and uh, and yeah, they put on a uh, an extended concert. And this material, material was released um, on debut records across, I think, like four 10-inch records or so. So uh, some of the design looked like this. So this is an original 10-inch pressing of uh, volume three of the quintet recordings. There were basically volumes one, two, and three. Then there was a Bud Powell at Massey Hall edition as well that was just kind of kind of separate, but but part of the, uh, the same concert. So basically some of the concert was in quintet format. Some of it was in trio format where Bud Powell was essentially the leader. And then there's also a recording of a Max Roach uh, solo um, that is uh, that is all going to be a part of it as well. So what do you get in this box set? Well, you get all of that content that I just mentioned, but interestingly, and I learned this in the interview that I just completed, um, interestingly, Charles Mingus wasn't happy, I guess, with uh, how his bass was recorded, and so he took the master tapes away and overdubbed his uh, his part. So basically what you get to hear in the box set is you get to hear it without the uh, the dubbing and uh, and then with the dubbing, so you can kind of compare. Um, so yeah, it, there's, there's like 19 tracks here. Uh, it's coming out on November 17th, and obviously because this is Craft Recordings, there's um, you know some pretty good uh, uh, el you know elements to it, right? There's 180 gram vinyl. The lacquers are cut by Kevin Gray. Um, Paul Blakemore actually did the 24-bit audio restoration and remastering. So uh, the source of this, I guess the tapes were very fragile, so they did have to convert to digital. They did some restoration because there's a lot of dropouts and. Um, and anyway, as is usual, right, with uh, with craft recordings, you know this thing's gonna sound great and as good as it possibly can sound. I don't think anybody would probably be uh, happy with um, with it if it was uh, all analog, given some of these issues. So this is available over on craftrecordings.com for $100. 
All right, next up is uh, actually the Verve Acoustic Sounds series, and I should have uh, mentioned this probably in part one because I think it talked about another release in that uh, in that series, but I forgot. I forgot Coleman Hawkins encounters Ben Webster. This is coming out on December 8th. Um, so the details on this one are that it was mastered by Bernie Grumman from the original analog tapes, as we should expect from this series. 180 gram pressed QRP Stoughton jacket. This one includes, well, Coleman Hawkins and uh, Ben Webster, who I absolutely love. I've, uh, I've recorded a whole video at one point on just Ben Webster's Verve recordings. Uh, you also have Ray Brown, Herb Ellis, Oscar Peterson, and Alvin Stoller in the lineup. This one is uh, it's $38.98. Um, I am very excited about this one because I love Ben Webster so much and I love Coleman Hawkins and I love the series. There's just a lot for me to love uh, out of this one and it's gonna be one that I'm gonna pick up. All right, so some of these are actually gonna be organized by the issuing label and I wanted to do that at least with International Anthem. And the first one I wanna talk about is something I forgot to mention in a prior video. I'm not talking about part one, but even before that, because this title was put out in September. I actually think it was only, I think vinyl was only available maybe say in the last couple of weeks and it took me a long time anyway to get my uh, pre-order actually shipped and then it arrived and I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about this. So Alabaster de Plume and the title is uh, Come With Fierce Grace. Again, released in, December, in September, vinyl is available now. Um, so the, th this one, if you like Alabaster de Plume, you're gonna like this one is basically the guidance. Um, he isn't for everybody sometimes, and that's a stage name, but uh, his music isn't uh, for everyone. Sometimes he incorporates uh, vocals in ways that I'm like a little bit eh on, but overall, I I love all of his albums and I think they're very worthwhile. Um, if, if I'm going to recommend a track, I think it's a Sibo Mandi. That's the one to go with. It sounds vaguely cape jazz-y, so if you like cape jazz, um, then I'd uh, certainly recommend this one. So um, let's see, the standard black vinyl for all of the international uh, anthem titles, uh, it's very nice on both sides, is, uh, is actually pretty affordable. It's only $24. Um, if you want the limited edition in this, in, uh, for this title, it's a honey color, it's 29. So 24 to 29, relatively inexpensive to get some of these titles from International Anthem. And I think they're putting out some of the most exciting new music, right? These aren't reissues, this is new music. And, uh, and I think you should check it out. Again, starting with uh, Sibu Mandi. Um, so otherwise, let's see, the, the, the reference the lacquers are cut by Daniel K at SST, which is he seems to do um, not all of the titles, but a lot of them. European orders for this one are actually going to be pressed at Palace. The U.S. orders are going to be pressed at Smash Plastic in Chicago. But um, I would definitely recommend this one. Um, so another one that um, that actually just came in that I want to make sure that I reference as well. This one came out just a couple days ago, so November 3rd. So I only just barely missed this one. Um, so this is titled Reservoir, and this is the second self-titled release by Reservoir. So they're both called Reservoir, and apologize, there's not a lot to go on from neither the front nor the back of this thing, but it is also put out uh, by International Anthem. Uh, the l musician who leads Reservoir, his name is uh, Will Miller, He's a producer and a composer. He incorporates jazz beats, classical. Um, there's like MIDI kind of keyboards in here, drum machines, also sort of a 70s R&B sound. There's a lot going on here, but I'm a huge fan. And his uh, his first album was just, it, it got a lot of accolades. Everyone got really excited about it. And therefore, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of excitement around this one as well. So again, Lacquer's Cut by Daniel K at SST. This is pressed at Palace in Germany, I think regardless of uh, where you order it from. Standard black vinyl edition, $24. Limited edition cloud color vinyl for $29. Um, and, and if you're gonna start somewhere, I would check out the track Inside Minds. So again, just released, really excited to get this copy in just today. Haven't even listened to it yet but I've previewed the, uh, the digital tracks and, um, and I know that it's, uh, it's, it's, definitely, um, it's definitely exciting stuff. And so the next one I'm gonna bring up was, this is a little bit, this is a little problematic too. So it was put out on cassette tape earlier this year, but the vinyl was only just announced and it's coming out in February, but I didn't wanna wait for February to reference it in a video because I don't wanna forget. So anyway, uh, the title is, uh, it's called In Electric Time and it is by Jeremiah Chu. So Jeremiah Chu did a, uh, put out a really fantastic uh, sort of duet album uh, last year, I wanna say, that I got a lot of energy from. And, and so I wanted to, uh, to bring this one forward as well. I had to pre-order it. I listened to some of the digital tracks on Bandcamp and I think it's fantastic. So with this one, In Electric Time, what happened was he went into a vintage synthesizer museum that's in Highland Park and uh, he basically messed around with these old vintage uh, synthesizers. 
And um, I would say, I would just say, go check out a track on Bandcamp called Seawater Swell. I found this one just super interesting, almost feels like it sort of evokes this idea of like, I don't know, like almost an older idea of what the future sounded like, if that kind of makes sense. It will when you, uh, when you listen to it. So anyway, like all of these others, uh, black vinyl, $24, limited edition, mint vinyl in this one for $29. And again, the vinyl, it's, it's available for pre-order, but it comes out actually in February. All right, let's move on to two really exciting releases by Sam Records. So Sam Records is out of France, um, sort of a small batch label, and they just announced two titles that I believe are both coming out on December 1st of this year. So the first one is just an incredibly rare record. Um, most people would never have the opportunity to own this, myself included, and it is by Sahib Shahab, and it is uh, Sahib Shahab and the Danish Radio Jazz Group. So they just announced it for pre-order. You can go over to samrecords.fr and check this one out. It was originally released on the Danish label called, called Octave, I believe. Um, like I said, just incredibly rare in its original form. It was originally, it was first, I'm saying that word a lot, it was first recorded in August of 1965 in Denmark. There's a lot of people joining Shahab on this one whose names I can't pronounce. Um, the, uh, this release is limited to 3,000 copies. It is remastered from the original Stereo Master Tapes. It's 180 gram vinyl pressing, pressed at uh, Marciac, which is in France. And um, so there's a couple of ways to get this, right? So you can either order it directly from Sam Records, and it's 30 euros uh, to do that, plus you have international shipping, okay? So the other way that you can do it is you can order it from Acoustic Sounds. There could be other retailers, um, but not that I'm aware of. So anyway, you can go over to Acoustic Sounds and you can get it for $39.98, which I do think is a little bit better than, um, than ordering it direct and paying for shipping. So that is the first one, and I will say I pre-ordered that one because I'm excited about it, and I'm still thinking about pre-ordering this next one. So the next one is by the Heath Brothers, um, and it is called the Heath Brothers Paris 1976. So available for pre-order now, out on uh, December 1st. This is never before released live recordings from the Heath Brothers. So if you're thinking about Heath Brothers, there's a bunch of their titles, I forget on what label, it might have been Warner Brothers or something like that, that weren't that engaging. Then you also have a title that they put out on, um, on uh, what was it, on um, Strata East. Can't even uh, come, up with, uh, come up with words today. So it was originally put out on Strata East and, um, and that one is great. And I really wanna make sure that when I say these things that I'm not just saying that that one's great and the others aren't just because it's on Strata East. But I've listened to I've listened to some of these albums and I do think that Strata East title is the standout. So the lineup here includes, well, the Heath brothers, Jimmy Heath, Percy Heath, and Tootie Heath, or Albert Heath. Uh, and then you also have Stanley Cowell on this one, who was one of the co-owners or sort of, uh, you know, folks who started the label. So also with this one, it's limited to 3,000 copies. It is also remastered from the original Stereo Master Tapes, 180 gram vinyl pressed in Marciac, France. Uh, this one is cut by Kevin Gray at Coherent, and, uh, and similarly, 30 euros on Sam Records, $39.98 over on Acoustic Sounds. All right, this next one is by Omnivore. Um, so Omnivore recently put out, and I say recent, over the last couple of years, put out several albums by a, let's say, lesser known musician named, and we'll see if I can pronounce this right, Hassan Ibn Ali. Um, and, and so anyway, yeah, they, they put out a, a couple of them over time. One was simply called the Lost Atlantic album, uh, which was supposed to be a follow-up to one I believe that he recorded with Max Roach for, for Atlantic. Then there was a follow-up that Omnivore put out as well that was uh, his solo recordings. And now here we have a third one. So this is 11 previously unissued tracks, and it is titled Reaching for the Stars trios, duos, and solos. So this is coming up, uh, it's gonna be available on November 10th. It is a double LP, they're charging $39.98 for this. Um, and in those 11 unissued tracks, you have Henry Grimes and then you have Khalil Madi for six of them. You have three songs where Ali is with vocalist Muriel Gilliman, or excuse me, Gilliam, and then there's also some solo stuff. Uh, otherwise, I don't really know that much about this, wasn't able to preview it. I know that it was mastered by Michael Graves, and I know that there's a lot of folks who were very, um, you know, got a lot of energy from some of those earlier recordings that Omnivore put out. So I think there's probably gonna be a lot of folks who are excited about this one as well. 
All right, next one up is a Johnny Griffin title. This is Live at Ronnie Scott's, 1964. This one's coming out um, also on the 10th, so uh, just a couple of days away. So this is being released by Gearbox Jazz, a label I'm not that familiar with. Um, and here's the thing, there's a lot of Johnny Griffin stuff out there, especially his live recordings, and especially his live recordings that were put out in, or recorded in Europe. So um, at, at least at local shops around here, I feel like they're almost like a dime a dozen. Like you just always see uh, his live stuff. So I, I will be interested to see if this one is differentiated in some way in terms of its uh, the quality of the music. And I think that the lineup at least suggests that that, that might be the case. Um, so you have Stan Tracy, um, who, who often uh, performed right at uh, Ronnie Scott's. So you have Malcolm uh, Cecil or Malcolm Cecil. And then you also have Jackie Dugan. So this is an all analog release uh, cut from the original master tapes. Uh, and it was, it was mastered by uh, Casper Sutton Jones and Daryl Scheinman. Uh, it's being presented on 180 gram vinyl, gatefold jacket, double LP, and for a price of $37.98. So here's a little bit of an unusual one, at least in terms of it being chosen for a reissue. This is by Jimmy Jeffrey, and it is um, it is titled Music for People, Birds, Butterflies, and Mosquitoes. This was originally pu uh, put out on the Choice label, which is not a uh, not too well known of a label. They didn't have too many releases. Um, the actual label who's putting this reissue out is Candid. So I don't know if Candid uh, and its parent company own the, uh, own the master tapes, if they bought out the label at some point. But anyway, um, it's being put out on Candid. It's remastered by Alex McCullough and cut by Jeff Powell. Um, like I said, originally released on Choice. So the lineup here includes Kiyoshi Tokunaga on bass and Randy Kay on drums. Um, it's 180 gram. It is priced at uh, $28.99 or $26.99, depending on uh, the source that you go to. And the funny thing about this one is it's either being released on November 17th or December 1st. I've seen it referenced in both, uh, both dates different places, so uh, you'll have to figure that one out. I would actually recommend previewing this one. I can't speak for how this one's gonna sound, but I do have an original pressing, and I find it to be um, fantastic music. Just really interesting to hear Jimmy Jeffrey getting into this style of music, which is a little bit, I don't wanna call it experimental or avant-garde per se, but it was a little bit more free. Uh, and, I, and I personally think that he sounds fantastic on this album. So uh, jury's out on whether this particular release will sound good, but um, I would at least encourage folks to look up this album and check out some of these tracks. All right, you all know I love the Wee Jazz label or Wee Jazz Helsinki. I like to talk about their releases. I typically talk about their releases um, in, in these kinds of uh, videos that I do just because they put out so much music that I really enjoy. So uh, they have one coming out on November 10th, so just a couple of days away, and it is called Post Coma uh, by Coma Saxo. That's the, uh, that's the artist. So um, what to say about this one? It's really a variety of styles of music. I feel, I feel like it's it's very improvisational, but also very modern. Um, some elements are quite analog in sound in terms of the instrumentation, whereas elsewhere, there's just a lot of electronic components. So there's a lot going on here. It's not a traditional jazz album, I would say, but that's not a bad thing at all. I actually really like some of these musicians, especially in Europe, especially on this label, who are doing very interesting things with music, and I think this is a good example. Um, check out the track called Watten Coma. That's the one that kind of sold me on picking this one up. So I did uh, pre-order it and I'm looking forward to getting this one in. Um, so with this title, there is a standard edition for 24 euros. It's also a gold vinyl edition for just 25 euros. So it's almost the same price. Relatively inexpensive, except the fact that uh, that you got to pay for shipping. And so, what I always tell people with Wee Jazz, because I don't know where you can get it in the U.S., is that if you're going to order from them on Bandcamp, just make sure you're grabbing a couple titles, <laughs> different uh, different ones. There's a lot of good stuff that you can preview and um, and consider picking up. All right, so for those of you who like more challenging music, um, you're in luck because Superior Viaduct is putting out four titles by Milford Graves. Three of them are Milford Graves and Don Pullen, so credit to both of them, and one of them I think is just credited to, uh, to Milford Graves. All of these are being released on November 24th, so just a couple of weeks away. And um, there's a little bit of a kind of a nuance because they're not. there's some overlap here. So you can get the complete Yale concert uh, 1966, which is a double LP release. It's limited to 500 numbered copies, I believe. It is the first ever reissue of this, and it is sourced from the original master tapes. What this double LP release does is it combines two releases that were previously released. One is in concert at Yale University, and the other is, uh, I believe, just titled Nomo. 
So they're bringing these two things together at a $40 price point, you can, uh, you can pick this up. Now, if you don't want both of them, you can get each of these titles individually. So you can get In Concert at Yale University just as a single LP, it's only 25 bucks. Or you could get Nomo, also single LP, also 25 bucks. Uh, so there's one other title that, um, that is just credited, credited to Milford Graves, and uh, this one is titled Bobby, and it is also $25. So for those folks uh, out there who, who are fans of this kind of music, November 24th, again, being put out by Superior Viaduct. All right, so back to a couple of new recordings that I'm excited about that are coming up soon. So uh, the first one that I wanted to bring up is by Ambrose. Akin Musiri, I believe is how you pronounce his last name. And uh, the title of the album is called Owl Song. It's coming out on December 15th. This is uh, uh, Akin Musiri in a trio format. It's being put out by none such label. So the, uh, let's see who joins him on this, but Bill Frisell, uh, the guitarist, Bill Frisell, and then drummer uh, Herlin Riley is joining him as well. So again, new music, previewed a couple of tracks, sounds really interesting to me, um, and it is being, um, let's see, it's being sold for $24.98. All right, so the last one I wanna bring up is almost like sort of half cheating because the music actually came out over the summer, but the vinyl, I believe, just came out in October. Plus, it's not a US release, and so for us to get it here, in fact, in fact, US retailers aren't even selling it. So I think it's, I think it's still fair that you should consider it almost in this video and as a pre-order because it's not in the US yet. <laughs> so this one is called uh, Bad With Names, and it is by uh, Corto Alto. So this is a interesting one. I came across this just in one of my rabbit hole internet kind of things and I came upon the music, previewed a couple of tracks and then I started listening to the entire album and I was like, wow, this is, a, this is really interesting stuff. So um, Corto Alto, I guess, is, a, uh, is like a stage name. The music is by Liam Shortall from Scotland. This is his debut album and I would call it elements of jazz, but also elements of like hip hop and broken beat and some of these other styles that I feel like a lot of new, uh, new musicians are incorporating a lot of these things together and not really boxing themselves in right into a single, into a single style. Um, this is just really interesting stuff. I would recommend checking out the track just simply titled by it's actually the last one, which is kind of clever with the name, but, um, I mean, I don't know why that one in particular, just because there's a lot that's compelling here. You should just go over to, um, you know, Bandcamp or, or wherever that you might be able to find this and uh, and, and uh, preview it. And, and I was able to preview it, so I know you can too. Um, so what to say about this, I guess, um, 25 British pounds is, uh, is how much they're charging for it. I was not able to find a way to purchase this in a uh, inexpensive way. So 25 British pounds is about $30 US plus you're paying $20 for international shipping. <laughs> so what I did is I went over to eBay and I found a retailer who was in the US who is selling it. The problem is that there are like delivery windows like 20 over like tw the span of 20 days. So who knows if they even have the title on hand yet. I don't know. I just figured I might as well put it in my order because I knew that I wanted to get this on vinyl and that's how I did it. But um, any event, Bad With Names by Corto Alto. Go check it out. Okay, that's it. So between part one and part two, this is almost an hour of new releases coming up through the end of the year with a few exceptions. And um, I know that there's more. I'm sure that there's more that I should have included and I just can't because this is, uh, this is too much. So um, a couple of things though to keep an eye out for is that typically Tone Poet announces their release schedule for the next uh, at least six months, if not calendar year in November. So I think that we're going to be hearing about that soon. I think we have to wait typically until January to hear what's happening in the Acoustic Sound series. Obviously, I'll be covering those release schedules once they're put out, but this should be the last new release video that I do in 2023. So I hope that, uh, that folks were able to get something out of this, maybe find out about a couple of new releases that they weren't aware of. So thanks very much. As always, I'll see you next time.